Hello, welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> I don't, I forgot to change the teleprompter. I'm sorry. You know, I have to read everything on the teleprompter. You are exhausting. We don't have a teleprompter. You are an exhausting human being. So today, before we get into true crime, okay, I want to talk about the true crime that is Michigan demolishing everybody and then setting another record this week with the most players to have or go to pro day and be scouted by the NFL, 18, and the most players drafted in a single season into the NFL. So we won everything this year. So anyways. Hail to the victors. So anyways. Hail to the victors. So anyways. Behind. Hail to the conquering oh, anyway. heroes. Hail. Hail to Michigan. The only team with over a thousand wins. So the, the true crime mm -hmm. here is that more people don't bow to us. You would fucking love that if I bowed to you every day. Of course. <laughs> this is my beautiful co-host, my lovely, amazing, incredible, beautiful, perfect wife, Nona. That is her real name. Yeah. I am Andrew. You are exhausting. That is also my real name. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And today, we're talking about true crime. So, Nona. Yes, Andrew. We just watched that show about the Watcher. It's mm -hmm. not actually, that's not really what I wanted to talk about, but okay. I figured we'd bring that up. Because it's based on a true story. Okay. But, like, how much of it do you think is true... How much of it do you think is exaggerated? Not just exaggerated, but like you know the the last letter that they received when the main cast was living in the house, mm -hmm. the dad sent the letter. Right. Like how many how many of those do you think? Like, do you think that's actually spawned from a prank, and then somebody was like, "Oh, I could really fuck with some people if I continue this." I genuinely don't know, but I am very curious. Who do you think was in the stairwell? At the end. Spoilers, by the way. In the stairwell at when, the end. When Stippler's mom. Oh, oh. When she had moved into the house. Because uh -huh. that was a that was a, a thing that they had never shown leading up to there. We didn't. They implied the tunnels mm -hmm. early on. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't find it until like halfway through. Right. So that, that little compartment underneath the stairs. Do you think that was another tunnel? Do you think it was just a hiding spot? And who do you think it was? Um. Well... I think if any of it is true and it goes back to when the first guy was living there in 95 and actually killed his family, I think that he is more involved and psychotic and cultish. Do you think the guy that they, that was part of the little club that mm -hmm. was sneaking around the tunnel, that was living in the tunnels, mm -hmm. do you think that that is the guy? And do you think that's where he's been living the entire time mm -hmm. to stay hidden from society? Mm -hmm. Do you think that those people were ever caught or was that part of the story that was fabricated? Because in order to tell that story, you would have to know. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I'm genuinely curious as to how much is creative liberties and how much is based on what uh, homeowners have truly encountered. So I think that... Because that one of the letters was like I became the watcher or whatever after the last watcher, and like you will become one. I think that they're implying that the dad was the one that popped out of the stairs. Because remember, he went, he was, he lied to his wife and yeah, said that yeah. he was like stuck in traffic, and then she like pulled up, so she oh. knew where he was. So do you think that he? took on the role that never even crossed my mind but i was curious as to why he was outside of their house and introduced himself to the new homeowner well he didn't mean to introduce himself he didn't i don't think he knew the guy was on a run he was just out there continually obsessing and he just happened to walk up and was like yep i'm gonna fuck with these people just like i fucked with the last woman honestly he wants he's he, to 
I never even thought that he was going to become the next Watcher. I was or, thinking that he was suicidal. Do you think that maybe there's a possibility that because he was never friends with the other neighbors mm -hmm. and they were doing something and now he's doing something, do you think it's possible that there are other characters involved that we were either never introduced to or um, they just never actually, you know, there was no suspicion. So the, you know, the son faked the death of his parents. Right. That you, was completely left field. So maybe, what's his name, Mo and, mm -hmm. Mo was the woman. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what the husband was. Max, there was another M or something, yeah. Mo and whatever. And he had like an embolism or something. Yeah. So maybe he's actually living down the tunnels now. Maybe. Anything's possible. For all we know, it's still going on. Well, I'm sure they've there's too, sealed up there's all too the much, tunnels. There's too much publicity, yeah. They've gone down there and it says that it's they haven't, never been solved. They haven't solved the crime. Mm -hmm. But there's no way in hell anybody's buying any of those houses and not sealing up the tunnels because nobody wants somebody sneaking into their house. Right. I don't know, I'm curious. This came out like what, a year ago, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I think it came out a year ago and I wonder how much of the story of like, you know, the family in 95 supposedly all killed and covered up by well, like the I, local police. Like I said, it's, it's impossible to exist in the modern day without having any history. photographic evidence yeah. of your existence. You can't open a bank account. You can't buy a house. You mm -hmm. can't buy a car. You can't drive a car. You can't get insurance. You live in tunnels underneath somebody's house. You still need food and water and bathroom so he just pay the electric bill if he's sneaking in every night to feed himself and you never know somebody's gonna figure it out well you it, it's impossible at least in first world countries it's impossible to exist i just saw today i today. just yeah Maybe i just saw 90s. no i just saw like a year ago a man in Japan thought that his apartment was getting broken into like every night or something. And it turns out it was a homeless li woman living in a cabinet like above his kitchen fridge or something for an entire year. And he finally found out why, because he set up a camera and she was climbing in and out to feed herself. Like his food was going missing. Things were getting moved. And he was like, he legit thought he was going crazy. How many cabinets in this house do you open less than weekly? Uh, none. Right. So. But, you know, I'm sure there were cabinets that you didn't touch as a single man. No, all, I used all of them. Really? The, the only all ones that I didn't, the only ones that I didn't. There were frequently. entire bedrooms that you wouldn't touch because you were a single man. The only, so I'm saying what, like. What am I going to do? Go sleep on the no exactly the so there were there were closets within rooms that hypothetically oh, no. and i was in and out of there all the time I've, I've seen i've seen stories of people living in people's attics yeah this world is fucking crazy and you be a squatter you think that you're hearing things you tell yourself that you're hearing things you want to believe that oh it's just squirrels in the attic or whatever the case may be or like the the other show that we watched the the lady across the street with the giant glass of wine or whatever it was called and her lawn guy or handyman whatever was living in the attic steve zahn oh no 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 not steve zahn was the the gardener Wait, is that the same show? I don't know. Blurring shows together. The, Steve Don is the funny guy. You remember he was like, no, that was the right show. This is this is the handyman who was like fixing the mailbox no, for no, the entire I, I, show. I, I know what you're talking about, but I'm also talking yeah. about the gardener. The gardener. Or it was like the neighbor. And he was like, he hired somebody to garden his garden, but he was gardening her garden, burning all the flowers and bushes. And I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you do. Oh my God, Steve Zahn. I know that's his name. I don't know how to spell it, but there we go. This guy. Oh my God. That was a movie that we watched. Are you sure? Yeah, that was a movie that we watched with uh, Ashton Kutcher and Reese Witherspoon. That was a comedy movie, not a show about people getting murdered. 
You're well, just like blurring them all together. Who's the mad dogs? Okay. <laughs> I was just making sure it was still recording since the fans ramped down. That was kind of weird. We yes. are at, I'm trying to find where the timing By is. By the red dot. Uh, right 11 here. minutes only. Uh, wait. <laughs> we didn't even talk about LeeMaxMedia.com or NonaPhelps.com. I don't think we did in the last episode either. Mm -mm, missed opportunity. Yeah, missed opportunity. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Rate and review. I'm not even going to say the platforms because you're already listening if you heard me say that. Do it where you are. And then go and find us somewhere else and do it there too. Okay. I'll love you forever if you do. Oh, and he doesn't love anybody. So that's love really you. big. Sometimes. I love you. Only if I bow to him. I just love you more if you do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, every man every man deserves to have his eat kissed. Ew. Which, that's okay. absolutely never fucking We're, we're going we're gonna to go off on a quick little tangent here. You know how I always get on cash for putting his face on like tables and other like surfaces? Okay. He put his face on the dashboard this morning in the school drop off line while we were sitting there waiting. And I was like, you know what's been there? And he was like, you know, your mom puts her feet there. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he asked me if I had a Clorox wipe so he could wipe his face off. I said, what, you don't like feet in your face? He goes, no. Oh, disgusting. Or, Oh, he says it. Disgusting. Disgusting. So, this is an eight-year-old. He's so cute. Disgusting. Yeah. So, I, I made sure that you know. Because, I mean, that's true. You never know. You When you go to a restaurant, they might not necessarily, have, well, clean the table at all. Mm -hmm. Or clean it that well. Mm -hmm. Or you don't know what product they used, if it even did anything other than just smear the shit around the table. Speaking of shit... What is your reaction when you go into the men's bathroom and you see somebody who's come out of a stall and not wash their hands? What do you do? I make fun of them and I say it out loud so everybody knows. Just like Has I've... anybody ever like tried to come at you with, oh, it's none of your business or blah, 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 anything like that? Yeah. Why? Like... At that point, you know you've been caught. You know you're disgusting. Why would you try to defend your disgusting behavior? For the same reason that kids lie because they're embarrassed that they got caught and they can't admit that they were caught. I don't know. I don't know what made me think of it. It's, but... a, it's a defense mechanism. They don't want to admit that they were doing disgusting. the wrong thing. People yeah. are disgusting. Yeah. Just wash your hands. Anyways. I refuse. I've. I don't think I've ever, at least not a long time, taken a shit in the public restroom. Yeah, I was talking about, like, we will be somewhere and he'll come out and be like, don't go anywhere near that person over there. They didn't wash their hands. They're disgusting. It's the same guy as who <laughs> checking me out. And he's like, did you get a good look? Anyways. You know, there are the women that are listening to our show, they're like, I wish I had a man like Andrew. I wish I had a man that would stand up for me in public. You know, you know there are. They're like, I wish he was more attractive than him, but I wish I had a man that. He's fully expecting fan mail now, guys. So just make sure to seal it with a kiss. No. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not opening that shit. Mm -hmm. How you get anthrax? Anyway, so apparently we're talking about true crime here. Yep. So bring it on, babe. What's What's the uh, show that you think you were most interested in, and? What, that we've watched together? No, just in general. And what do you think has happened or that you know of or have some sort of vague or intimate knowledge of that you think is deserving of a movie or show? While she's thinking, I'll tell you guys a story about Monday, Tuesday, Monday, driving the kids to school. Okay. Continue thinking. Okay. I was driving the kids to school and normal road here in Wilmington and traffic already always sucks. And it just sucked a little bit more this particular morning. And where the traffic was stopped at, for the most part, was near a, a school zone where there is a sheriff's deputy every morning that is stopping and directing traffic on. It's a it's a split lane. It's a split four lane highway. So you have a grass median down the middle. So there's nowhere to turn around. There's no other lanes. There's some U-turn lanes periodically, but they're few and far between. There's nowhere to go. It's it's part of the uh, the areas like hurricane drain, rain drainage system. So it's a big, steep ditch. You're not driving down into there and getting out on the other side. So driving through, driving through, all of a sudden I notice 
cars are trying to merge in. We're in the right lane. They're merging in over in the left lane. I'm like, great. So now we got to figure out how to merge. And as the traffic in front of me clears, I start seeing additional officers, not just the sheriff's deputies usually, or there's actually uh, Wilmington PD is there. And they're all standing in the road. And then I see caution tape, whatever, crime scene tape, whatever. I see people merging. And then they're pulling off the the road and driving through my grandparents' neighborhood and then coming back on the road and stoplight on the other side. And my speculation was because they blocked off the entrance of the school and the school parking lot was empty, I thought it had something to do with the school. My first assumption was either bomb threat, school shooting, like a staff shooting because students weren't there yet. They're typically getting dropped off at the same time that we're driving through there. But because this scene had already been set up for presumably for a while, I would have assumed that it was staff on staff or something along those lines. Turns out after talking to a buddy of mine, it was a pedestrian that was hit by somebody driving. And I don't, I actually don't know if it was hit and run or if they stopped all John Jonathan said was that they had a license plate, but he, he even said he didn't know if it was hit and run or if it was, um, somebody that they had caught. And I'd never followed up the question with him. I mean, think about it. The fact that I went straight from crime scene in front of the school to bomb threat or shooting <laughs> didn't even consider that it was a hit and run, which is actually super common around here. Okay. So actually leaving drop off this morning. One of the crackheads going to the crackhead clinic. There's that sidewalk, right? Tell me why he's walking in the grass. So there's, you have the sidewalk, mm -hmm. you have a grass area next to the side, like a grass buffer, then the curb, then the road, right? Mm -hmm. He is walking on the grass, walking his bike in the road. Why not put your bike on the fucking sidewalk and walk? Because he's a crackhead. Right. So nothing makes sense. But seriously, people mm -hmm. to know what is going through their minds literally nothing <laughs> literally nothing is going through their mind That's probably true but i mean you've got them driving around hitting they hit kids by the mall a couple of years ago that one guy um we got this guy or girl or whoever splattered don't know if they were on a bike they just said it was car versus pedestrian there was a shoe in the road when we got there when we got like to the Mm -hmm. turn so they were hit hard enough to be either knocked out of their shoes or have their shoes knocked off of them and i do know this is a very very possible scenario even if your shoes or whatever are tied very tight because it happened to me oh yeah it happened to you when uh i broke my wrist when eric and i hit head on i was on it's a blind corner where i was on a four-wheeler was on a dirt bike came around the corner both wide in this turn I and each other head on. There was nowhere for either of us to go. It was either hit each other or hit a tree or both. Okay. And yeah, I lost, I was wearing motocross boots to like buckle up, like up your calf and lost one. I can't even picture you in boots. That's what I'm raising my eyebrow at. Okay. So, so. back to the true crime yeah. off the tangent, mm -hmm. off the tangent express t shirt idea. Dude, I'm still waiting for Freedom Boner. Get on that first. Yeah. Start writing these down. I need a list. Yes, master. Gonna be I me. will bow down to be, you I'm and gonna be the train create conductor. your list. I'm going to be the train conductor on the, on the Tangent Express. <laughs> As you're running a train on somebody. That's a thousand percent <laughs> what I'm picturing. You choo-chooing with your... Freedom Boner? I was just gesturing. Gotcha. So did you come up with a story while I came back from my tangent? So I had to cut myself off of all things true crime when I was pregnant with Charlotte. So this was like 2014. You were, you were like, what was it? Uh, investigation discovery. That was popular mm -hmm, at the time, right? Mm -hmm. Because I just flat out wasn't sleeping. I was very invested and very pregnant and then not sleeping okay. because I was thinking about all these murderers coming around. So I have, a, I have a question for the audience and for you. Put it in the comments. I want to know. I, I want to make kind of a poll. And put if you're uh, male, female, or an Apache helicopter, whatever you are. 
What uh, you identify as? Yeah. Okay. Because I want to know, I'm going to ask you this question right now. What is your true crime, true crime genre? Are you a murder person? Are you a cannibal person? Ew. Are you a robbery okay. person? Are no. you a child abduction person? M- murder, for sure. I was watching yeah. shows like Snap, where it's mm-hmm. like a, a, a husband or wife. It's it's usually a domestic situation okay. um, where yeah. they have murdered their spouse and the whole story behind it. Usually, nine out of ten times, the murderer has a um, girlfriend or boyfriend on the side that they're trying to get out of their marital situation to be with. Um, so those those were the type of investigations that I was into. Meanwhile, of course, I was in a terrible marriage with a husband who was doing all of those things minus the murdering part not me yes not me. so that was i could kind of identify with and maybe was low-key trying to um make sure that i wasn't seeing any of those murderous signs within but i had to cut myself off because 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 of the wonderful things he does <laughs> i'm off to see the wizard did you take your Ritalin today? Yes. Did you take your Adderall? No. Um, I had to cut myself off so that way I wouldn't spiral into all the things of... Let's be clear, audience. Nona identifies with anything and everything that she consumes. Yes. Music, TV, movies. There's always a character that I am. There's always a character that she is. Mm-hmm. There's always a scenario that we are. I'm a very empathetic person. And so I see a lot of truth in that that is around me. And I do identify with that. You're, you're having a very wordsing kind of day, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be careful with my words because, um, I don't know, I, I just... I I had to cut myself off from watching anything true crime because I found it entirely too relatable and I kind of thought that I was going to be in that situation. I'll just put it that way. We can never truly binge watch anything because as soon as it gets dark out, she wants to put on something humorous. Yeah. I uh, When you've been so scared in your life that you believe that that could truly happen to you um I I don't know any words to describe it for you Andrew because you just you just can't relate and so it's it's a feeling it's it's you can tell yourself all day you're safe now but um nobody's safe okay I can agree with that but again you're there's an acceptable Your level brain of can logically understand that this is not the situation, but your heart fe- can feel otherwise. There's, and there's I no understand that's not condition. anything that you would understand because you don't have a heart. I have a big heart. Probably enlarged. But no, I have a big heart. My heart's perfect. Just anyways. I think podcast dog needs to poop. He has stomach <laughs> noises. All right, do we need to pause it so she no, can go? <laughs> no, we're going to finish this. Don't diarrhea on the floor, okay? Don't diarrhea. I'm trusting you. The time we had, anyways. Mm, 26. Ooh. Ooh. We haven't actually talked about anything other than the TV show. Yeah, no. So what true crime are we talking about, Andrew? You're the one who decided that was the subject for this episode. I was hoping it was going to inspire you to come up with something. You, you can't put me on the spot like that. And I know you do that every well, single week well, they, and every single episode. Because because it's good it's good content. Um I spend the whole time circling trying to come up with words. There's uh and then you say you're not wording very wording. <laughs> so you guys you guys need to stop sharing bullshit from random accounts. If it's not coming from the actual actors themselves or from a movie or TV studio or whatever, um stop sharing it. You just look like an idiot. What are you talking about? People have been sharing fake images and stories about a season four of Mindhunter. What? Yep. It's been on Facebook. I'm like, a simple Google search. 
would save you the embarrassment of sharing this. The, the, those accounts are doing this intentionally. They know people are not going to look into it. Mm-hmm. They're extending their reach. And then they're going to convert themselves to a porn account. Oh. Now I'm going to do a quick Google. Yeah, there's no season four coming. Yeah, no, I know. We looked because we were totally into that show. All right. Season four. But oh. There should be. And they should actually interview and solve it. Well, was it B- BTK was the one that mm-hmm. they kept That's teasing? What they, mm-hmm. And they never got around to interviewing, um, what's his name? Clown guy. What's his name? He has like three names. Yes. Somebody put it in the comments. I'm totally blanking on his name too. It was only two seasons too. So it had, it would be a third. Okay. Trying to get, I'm sure. No, it's all just show him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bring it back. Somebody buy the rights to the show and bring it back. I'll, I'll pitch in a subscription for the duration of the show and then I'll cancel it. I don't know. What do you think is better? Video on demand, like pay per view type stuff, or subscription perpetually where you own nothing and then it disappears? Subscription. No, absolutely. Yeah. No. no. It's a terrible I would model. never pay per view it's, ever. It's a terrible model. It's just like Windows is going to a subscription model now mm-hmm. because people are, are buying it. That's, the, that's why they're continuing to go down this fucking rabbit hill. Remember when Adobe, Photoshop, everything like that, buy once, cry once, and now it's a subscription. Did you say buy once, cry once? Yeah. I've never heard that phrase before. You're teaching me so much, (laughs) master. So much. Yeah, for whatever, $300 or whatever, you get Photoshop edition 2012, and you own it, and you use it for whatever duration. Okay. And then they started adding... Originally, you would buy the software, and then the software came with patches and updates for free. Then you bought the software, and the the patches and updates were subscription model. Now, you own nothing, and you you subscribe, and then when you stop paying, you have nothing to use. It's a bullshit model. They're trying to do with cars, too. Yes, you've mentioned that. And if people keep letting them do it, they're going to do it. Because what's going to happen is they're going to make the cost of um, leasing, essentially. Mm -hmm. They're going to make the cost of leasing what would now be the cost of ownership. And then they'll turn around and make the cost of ownership exponentially higher because they know that if you really want to own the car, you're going to pay the premium for it. Mm-hmm. Stop with the subscription bullshit. This is why everyone should be pirating again. Pirate all your movies, pirate all your TV shows, pirate your music, set up a NAS in your house. You remember LimeWire? That was the, the only one that I was able to do. Set up a NAS in your house. Use the Netherlands for your VPN location because they won't cut you off. Pirate all your media. You're welcome. There's plenty of tutorials. And how is that true crime related? Other than I mean, that is your, it sounds like you're, <laughs> it's a cyber crime. Yeah. I mean, okay. So if you own something mm-hmm. and then with a software update retroactively, the manufacturer takes it away from you, what's the difference? They're stealing something from you that you purchased outright. And if you're, if you willfully give up your right and don't fight back, now you've just, well, it's implied that it's okay. It's morally okay because the the country, the population determined that they didn't want to fight back against us. Therefore, it's legal. That's the precedent that they're trying to set with this stuff. Okay. Do you have a true crime story that you want to talk about? I still want to talk more about the, like, Dahmer. And... So I, I just heard um, the Apartment 213 song when i was at the gym okay again. and is that what sparked this yeah so john in, wayne gacy yeah that was the in, clown guy in, in the, just hit me in the lyrics it's uh jeffrey don't do it again don't listen to the voices inside your head i don't remember the show really making it seem like the voices in his head yeah he he implied that he had like you know desires or needs or whatever 
but it, he definitely seemed more like he had some sort of like attachment disorder from his mom leaving. Mm, no. Or his dad leaving, that was my leave, whatever. No. Um it was definitely compulsion based. It was not an attachment disorder. What do you what do you think would have happened? But he, yes. What do you think would have happened if he the the guy that he was in a relationship with for a, a little while, the guy that like his who was, who was deaf? Yes. Yes. What do you think would have happened if they had a happy relationship? Do you think Dahmer gets away with all the other murders and lives happily ever after and is still walking among us today? They did have a happy relationship. Until he tried to leave. Yeah, literally just to go home. Yeah. Right. But what I'm saying is, like, what if, like, Dahmer went with him everywhere and, like, he was mm -hmm. normalized to it and everything was no. okay? I truly believe that there are certain people who are so compulsive with their needs that nothing will stop them. It doesn't matter if they're happy in one regard or not. Do you think that if it had gone on for longer that he would have maybe tried to introduce him to that world like let's do it together? No, I don't think together, but I think he would have still done it on the side. Like while well, his boyfriend was like back home or something like that. So. But ultimately it would how, have ended at some point and he would have still killed him. How do you get away with it then? If you're like, if, if, if the expectation is that they're going home or whatever, like mm -hmm. eventually there's going to be some, oh, my, oh, what was he taking a bus or train or something mm -hmm. like that? My ticket didn't work or, there was a storm and I had to come back mm -hmm. or any other million of speculative possibilities. And he would have potentially walked in on yeah. a situation and then gotten killed in the process. That's for sure what would have happened. You don't think Dahmer would have tried to convince him like, no, let's do this together. No, I don't think so. Come on. No, because nobody would do it as perfectly as he himself would. It's a compulsion thing. I don't know. He seems like the kind of guy that would have tried to teach somebody. So. He would have been mad if he didn't get it right, but I think no. he would have tried to teach him. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Mm -mm. What do you know about John Wayne Gacy? Oh, I know very little about him other than uh, dressing up as a clown. And I believe it was either Bible verses were said also. I there was something something religious in the aspect as well as while being a clown which i didn't understand i don't know if he was like molested by a priest or what sparked that um but i believe it was young boys and men and you said you've never seen house of a thousand corpses or mm -hmm. the devil's rejects mm -hmm. or i think camera 31 was the thir there's three movies i can't remember and what are they about they're like this family. There's like a, I mean, not all of them are family, but there's like, there's one family. It's Rob Zombie and his wife are like one of them. And, okay. Um, but there is a guy that I'm pretty sure is inspired by John Wayne Gacy because that's what he does. He dresses up like a clown to mm -hmm. kill people. But um, Rob Zombie, so they have, there. there's one movie that's not part of that series, but there, it's like a similar thing. And him and his wife are actually kidnapped by like a murder cult and they bring them into this like massive like warehouse that they can't like escape from and they have all of these other serial killers it's like it's like hunger games but like in a warehouse building run by a bunch of psychotic like rich serial killers who bring the poor serial killers in to fight the other serial killers. what yeah yeah it's it's a movie of, of all time for sure to be sure rob zombie's kind of a I mean, he's weird, but he's kind of, he's obviously good at music. I have no idea who Rob Zombie is. Oh my God, yes you do. Okay, show me who he is. You've heard the song Dragula. I'm sure you've heard the song Dragula. I don't know what that is. Dragula? Yeah. As in like Dracula being dragged? Dragula? No, like his car, I think. it's The song is about a car, so I'm not going to play the audio loud enough for anybody here. But we'll get copyright strike that people can hear this or if we're not talking about it. But I'm I'm 100% certain you've heard this song before. 
Um, he's got trying to talk until the lyrics come on so that I'm talking over this. I'm giving color commentary to YouTube. We're not trying to play the song on the podcast for anybody to listen to. You don't you don't no, know this at all. Okay. I don't know this okay. at all. Watch, we're gonna get copyright strike because it was over seven seconds. But super yeah, super beast was I I know th- you have to know. You have to know. Everybody knows who Rob Zombie is. You have to. You said I'm uncultured. I will find something that you're familiar with. Okay. He has another band too. Um, of course, I can't think of what it's called. But he has another band yeah. that he's in. So his like independent music is just under Rob Zombie. Okay. He's a director, producer, and actor. And then he's in another band. So he's a busy man. Okay. His what? Like, you just saw what he looked like. That's like what he looks like. In his normal daily life, his wife is completely normal looking. Okay. How would you like to have the last name Zombie? Do you think it's his actual last name or do you think he changed it? I don't know. I guess we'll find out right now since I'm looking him up. He's only 59. What? He looks so much more beat up than. I mean, drugs. Drugs make you age. I actually don't think he was big into the drug scene. I think he's just very. She's pretty. That's what's like. She's such a normal looking person. I guess there he doesn't look as crazy. He looks mm-hmm. more like a like he looks like kind of like uh, Dave Grohl or like somebody like that, like a eighties, nineties rock, not like metal, but rock, like the perpetual, like the music lives on forever kind of. Okay. Right? Yeah, that's actually from that. Would you want me to about. be like a foot taller than you? Like I'm sure she's wearing heels there because look. Yeah. You don't want me to tower over you? No. Unless your boobs were right at face height. Yeah, you that's what I I was like, you wouldn't want me to tower over you? No. Unless boobs were right at my face. That, no, that's okay. If I was a head taller but you wouldn't, than you, but you wouldn't, then they would be at your But then you wouldn't like it because we'd be in public and I would just be Yeah. I would not want to be taller than you ever. No, I'm just saying like my face would just be right in here the whole time. I'd be like in the checkout line in the grocery store and I'd just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. I know you do, because I'm telling the <laughs> yeah. truth. He sold more than 15 million albums worldwide. I was trying to click to see if he changed his name. Um. Uh, oh my God, his real name is Robert Cummings. Is his, his last name Robert Cummings. Robert Bartle Cummings, mm-hmm. or is it Bartle or Bartley? Rob Stracker, Straker, Stracker. He has lots of names, apparently. Well, he has a brother named Spider One. <laughs> okay. Does he identify as a spider? Wow, that's that's that. He reminds me of um, um. Actually, yeah. That's how I. Oh my god, he looks just like the dude that was in Link. He was the the other guy in Lincoln Park, the other singer, not Chester. Oh my god, I can't think of his name now. Okay. Anyway, so back to true crime. Back to true crime. What would you do if you were in the scenario of the movie that I just talked about? I, I I think if I was being hunted. I think some yeah. It's like so it's like a weird like creepy warehouse with like all kinds. If of- I was being hunted, I would be probably the first one to die. I have no self defense skills don't, of any kind. You don't think you'd be the lucky character? No. Yeah. So you're first. I'm not blonde. Your first act death. Yeah. No, you could be like Pamela Anderson in a scary movie. You just get stabbed in the implant. And it's like, remember he like stabs her and he like pulls it and it's like the whole implant. Oh my God. Did you even watch that movie? Uh-uh. Oh my God. You gotta stop yawning. I'm sorry. You're so boring. You're putting me to sleep mm. over here. Guys, check out he's wrong, she's right.com. Give yourself a one episode shout out. Shirts and stuff will be on there soon. If I remember, if I remember. Freedom boner. Hey. We're working on we're working on an actual like production schedule. We're using project management software. We're gonna have like checklists. No one will be able to. Maybe go he'll finally tell me what the fuck we're gonna talk about, so I can no. actually be prepared. They know it's better when I don't. Catching you on the spot, seeing your reaction on video is better content than you than the back of. Remember, remember how I said that that show that you were watching with the girls is like dumb. Because nobody has dialogue like that. Gilmore Girls. Nobody nobody says one sentence, one sentence, one sentence. Nobody does that. That's not fucking real life. It's weird. It's like uncanny valley. It's nobody, nobody talks like that. And 
absolutely nobody talks like that with every character in the entire show. It's like the weirdest universe. Okay, so anyways, Freedom Boner and Untapped Potential are the two shirts that you're supposed to be working on. And the train. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Andrew running a train on, I don't know who. The tangent train. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be, it'll be like a word cloud. Freedom Boner, (laughs) Untapped Potential, and Andrew running a train. And we decided that we're going to replace... Or not replace, but cover up on when our sets and the other part of the house when we have guests. Um, we're going to replace the family photos with other things so that you guys will see what the kids look like because you're psychos. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the images is going to be Homelander jerking off, but I'm going to superimpose my face on Homelander. If you guys have ever seen The Boys, you'll know what I'm talking about. When he's standing on top of the skyscraper jerking off over the world. That's going to be... The main image in the backdrop of the set is Andrew Lander jerking off over the world. Anyways. Anyways. What time is it? 46. Ooh, this is a longer short episode. Because you went on 25 tangents, babe. That's what we're all about around here. Mm, On the number one most boring podcast. This this podcast is going to be analyzed by psychological, sociological, medical experts about what happens when you let somebody with ADHD and autism <laughs> run a podcast. This will be analyzed for years, for, for millennia. I promise. You promise. I promise. You promise a lot of things. I'm going to send links to people and say, analyze this. And then that's going to boost our views because they're going to be like, these guys are fucking dumb. We need to watch it and learn everything about them. We are in their little Petri dish. Anyways. He's holding her hostage for sure. Look at her eyes. She blinked twice. Bye. Bye.